This week, we'll take a look inside the festive traditions of Salvadoran American culture. This is a culture serious about celebrating the joys of life. Come share in lively gatherings filled with music, dance, food, and fun. And get to know this community's deep values of loyalty, love, solidarity, and a strong faith. Join us as we catch a glimpse of the Salvadoran American experience. All coming up on World in America. Salvadorians are unique because uh, we are always like uh, happy people. That we came because we had to come into the United States and we are very hard working people. The principal characteristic of El Salvadoran is that we, we are very friendly. They have come here to the United States to work hard, to share values and to be part of this uh, great nation. They are great people with rich values and morals and with a very rich culture. They're very happy to see you. They, they greet you. They, they show your uh, respect. El Salvador, uh, the meaning of El Salvador, is very important to know the meaning of El Salvador. You know what? It's the, 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 the only country in the world that has the name of Jesus. Although it's the smallest country on the American mainland, El Salvador's original name might have been one of the world's longest. Provincia de Nuestro Señor Jesucristo El Salvador de Mundo. Today, it's simply shortened to El Salvador or the Savior. After centuries of Spanish rule, El Salvador finally gained its independence in 1821. But while the country celebrated its new freedom, it continued to struggle with social and economic inequality that would cause many years of strife. When we return, we'll hear first-hand accounts from those who weathered the sometimes difficult transitions within their country and the United States. Coming up next on World in America. Welcome back to World in America. The majority of Salvadoran immigrants first came to the United States during the late 70s and the early 80s. Economic and political conditions had grown difficult, and many Salvadorans sought refuge from their country's civil war. Members of uh, El Salvador came to the United States uh, uh, like 40 years ago. They came running from uh, uh, the country, you know, from the civil war, but they stay. We have a lot of people who live in here in the United States already, Salvadorans. This brutal Salvadoran war fought between the years of 1980 through 1991 killed an estimated 75,000 people and even more suffered as a result. The war forced many to flee the United States. That was a civil war uh, was going on in 1980 and I saw no other option but to get out of the country. I went to Costa Rica first, and, and then I came here. The Salvadorans quickly established new communities, and today over 1.3 million Salvadorans reside in the United States. When we speak about migration, people coming to the United States, even though they have come like 40 years ago, I can tell you that every day, Salvadorians move uh, from uh, El Salvador to the United States. So that is a phenomenon that, that you cannot stop. And it's uh, a, a, every day you can see that Salvadorians are crossing the frontiers or some of them are coming to join uh, a, with their families. The U.S. provided a welcome refuge after having survived and escaped their country's civil war. 
but life in the States isn't always easy. When Salvadorians come to the United States, they have a lot of challenges. So everybody's running and everybody's like in their own world. Nobody cares about nobody, all right? And uh, especially, you know, the, uh, the high cost of living is very stressful. They, they don't understand sometimes the culture of the, of the Americans here in the United States. And also the uh, long hours that the parents have to work to support these families. That's a, 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 a one of the challenges, you know, to keep the family together and be able to work. The stress, the stress is very hard. The life here is very going, it's fast. You know what I mean? Because I don't know if I can to compare the life here and the life in my country is very, very, very different. You know. If they really want to, they can achieve their goals. However, there is a lot of obstacles. For example, the um, migratory status. And if you don't have, you know, your um, papers, you can't go to school. I mean, you can't go to college. And so pretty much in this country, if you don't have an education, you're nothing. The principal challenge is that legal situation uh, because they need to work and they live at the beginning. Uh, in a legal, illegal situation and that's very hard for them to work here. After the initial adjustment, there's plenty that the Salvadorans found to love about their new homeland. We have different food, uh, we have different um, way of dancing, but now with internet and globalization, I think that the, the world is getting closer uh, every day. What Salvadorans like about the United States is that it's a place of opportunity. The opportunity that we have here and also the education and the good education that I can get for my daughter. They come here because they, they want to improve uh, the quality of life. The Salvadoran Americans keep close ties and often live nearby to relatives and friends. They're diligent about sharing information, organizing discussions, and meeting regularly to plan community events. We celebrate a day here in the United States that is a national day by law. That day, the name is uh, uh, the American Salvadorians Day. And, it, uh, and we celebrate that in August 6th. There's some things, you know, that we can do as a community to preserve our culture is, you know, just to come together and not, not forget where, where our roots, not forget where we came from. At the, uh, at the Salvadorian Consulate, we teach English. We also been, um, we had a volunteer who was an American, he's an American professor, and he is being encouraging the Hispanic community. In this case, Salvadorians, because it's done at the Salvadorian Consulate to get the GED and then go to college. We've been doing that for five years. The Salvadorians are a, a very strong community. And when, for example, if the, we have some crisis, immediately uh, we respond to that crisis together. We have meetings, and in these meetings we talk about how to learn to live with the American systems. We, we work with a community uh, very hard. We have meetings almost every month in order to coordinate different activities. We have all these types of, of Salvadorian organizations to, to keep the culture alive and not to forget where we came from. This communal spirit is reflected in family life as well. Salvadoran Americans believe in sharing the daily experience of struggles, successes, and celebrations across multiple generations. The families are very tight, very close. We have a very close relations. In the families, we are very close, of course, and, 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 and any, any member of the family gets in trouble, no, we, do. we are right there to, to help them. We respect the family uh, very much and our values uh, are very strong. 
Um, a lot of differences I see in families is that in El Salvador, they're more together. You know, they sit down to have dinner. They, um, they go to the mall together. They go to the movies together. They take their you know, siblings everywhere, you know, older siblings. However, here, everybody's just doing their own thing. And sometimes kids are even embarrassed of their parents. Salvadorian families are very close. That's one thing that I, I have seen in, in, in the American culture, the, the United States. Parents and kids, we are all very close. Right? Even when they finish college, they marry, they leave, they still stay in touch, stay very close. And when the parents get very old, you know, somebody has to take care of them. Over here, they get sent to the nursing homes. We, especially, uh, I mean, I'm talking about for the Salvadorians, you know, we like to keep our parents at home. When our young people, when they get married, uh, they try to have their own houses. But you know what, for example, I'm gonna speak about my case. I left my house, when I got married, I had my own house. But um, every Sunday, I used to go to my parents' ha house to have lunch with them in order to uh, stay uh, close uh, every time with my family. So I used to go to my parents' house with my kids and also my, my siblings, they went with me, so we always are together and we, if we have a problem, we always try to solve that problem together. Salvadorans who immigrated alone often go through significant time and effort to bring their families to the States. Even though Salvadorians uh, come to, to the United States alone, for example, the, the, the men, uh, the man comes uh, alone and he has uh, to leave his family. When he comes to the United States, uh, you're going to see that this man is going to fight uh, all the time in order to bring the family to, to the United States in order to continue living together as a family. I think that's one of the big uh, uh, problems that we have with the Salvadorians, that uh, sometimes mom and dad and not there together, just one of the parents. Although they've kept close connections to their native country, these immigrants inevitably adopt a somewhat different way of life. Visiting El Salvador after living abroad can be just as challenging as making the initial adjustment to the U.S. Yeah, sorry, go. so when does the carnival start? When I go back to El Salvador, you know, right off the bat, people think that uh, just because I'm coming from America that, you know, I'm loaded with money and it's not like that. And also my friends think that they don't consider me Salvadoran despite the fact that I was born there, that I was raised there, and that I actually did a couple of years in school there. Um, despite the fact, however, they think that I'm American and they refer to me as La Gringuita, <laughs> which means the little American girl. Sometimes um, it's not that I forgot my Spanish, I mean, I know it fluently, but the thing is that here, you know, during school and then when I come home, I'm always speaking English, you know, there isn't any time for me to speak Spanish, but when I do over there, since I'm always speaking Spanish, I'm always stuttering, so when they think that I've conformed to the way of living here. We, we live like in two worlds, <laughs> all right? We do things that we used to do in El Salvador, we have manners from El Salvador, but we also live here the American way. Kids, you know, that were born here or they came in or, or we, the families brought them in when four or five years old. I mean, they don't remember what, when they were in El Salvador. So it's a big gap because they, they grow in the American way. The community strives to keep cultural traditions strong within their families and teach their children about the Salvadoran heritage. We have all these types of El Salvadorian organizations to, to keep the culture alive and not to forget, especially the, the, the uh, grown up where we came from and teach your kids uh, that, that, that uh, we have a, a, a very rich culture and, and don't forget that we came from El Salvador. When I raise my children, I always try to give them love and I always try them to, to get to know and get to learn as soon as possible the main values that we have in El Salvador.
Coming up, we'll revel in some music and dance Salvadoran style. From festive parties to faithful traditions, this community takes their fun very seriously. We'll take a nibble of some tasty pupusas, march along with a teen drum squad, all this and more when World in America returns. We're back with more World in America. Salvadoran Americans love to enjoy their culture through lively gatherings and community celebrations. To preserve Salvadorian culture in the, U, in the USA, uh, we work daily very hard. Salvadoran American parties are vibrant, colorful, festive, and frequent. Every party always includes plenty of munchies and music. We are very parranderos. Parranderos, that means that we like to go to parties a lot. Whether it's salsa or merengue, folk music or mariachi, live bands or radio, the Salvadoran Americans incorporate music into their lives whenever possible. Where there are songs, good times always follow. But these musical traditions also help preserve culture among the younger generation. Dancers, we like to dance a lot. Singers, we like to sing a lot. The, the, the traditional dances, you know, there's some girls that still do it, and then in the parades, you know, they go and dance it. You know, I, I see that as preserving culture. If you're heading out for a night on the town with the Salvadorans, it's important to look your best. Dressing well for an occasion shows that you value your friends and respect their company. Some tradition, some objects that pertain to Salvadoran traditional culture would be um, the dress of people because uh, they used to be like the indigenous, like the Mayas and stuff, and used to have like a very nice and extravagant way of dressing. The way you dress. If I respect you and we are in a certain place, I have to dress some way, and that means respect. Because if I don't dress appropriate for the occasion, I have no respect for you. <laughs> Many of El Salvador's high holidays derive from their strong Catholic heritage, such as Good Friday, Easter, and Christmas. The uh, Holy Week, the uh, New Year's, and the Independence. Those are uh, three big uh, holidays that, that, that I consider that everybody is willing to take a day off <laughs> so they can celebrate. First of all is the Easter time when I when at that time came to the my country, everybody is prepared to go to the church and to make food special, food that for that week. Good Friday, in that day, uh, nobody go to job. Everybody going to church uh, to pray. And also, uh, it's a special uh, dish for that day. Uh, we can only eat uh, fish, uh, no meat. Then Saturdays you go to church again, and Sundays, uh, what do you do on Sunday? A lot of people go to church, but the majority of people go to the beach. <laughs> All right. Saturday, uh, the next day, also the same routine, go to the shore, and Sunday, uh, go to the beach to enjoy the day. Elders in the community hold the most revered place in society. Respect for elders is formalized through modes of speech, such as using the formal rather than familiar address, as well as by simply spending time and paying attention to their elders' opinions and life experiences. We really are taught to respect our parents. Uh, we taught to respect other people, right? Not just our parents, but to feel the pain for other people. One way of showing respect in El Salvador is using the formal you in the language. Uh, in that, um, um, English doesn't have a formal U. For example, when um, 
a child would be talking to its elder, they would use usted instead of tu, and that's, that shows respect. Whether you're with family or friends, you'll never go hungry in the Salvadoran community. Using variations on the same basic ingredients like rice, beans, corn, yucca, tomatoes, peppers, meats, and cheeses, Salvadoran cuisine comes up with a surprising array of savory dishes. The name of the restaurant they call Comalapa Restaurant. Some ethnic Salvadorans have found entrepreneurial opportunities in the restaurant business, where there's always a high demand for good food served in a fun atmosphere. I worked a long time in restaurant, but after that I had my own idea. I don't want to depend from somebody else. I want to have my own business. If you're getting dinner in a Salvadoran restaurant, one item is always on the menu, pupusas. The first pupusas. No, matter, no question about but the pupusas. If you, any people from El Salvador or any restaurant, they don't have pupusa, anybody can say a straight restaurant, they don't have pupusa. When I think of Salvadorian cuisine, I can tell you that it comes to my mind pupusas. We have a pupusas. The main dish that comes to my mind when you say Salvadorian cuisine is definitely pupusas. Pupusas is made out of corn, cheese, pork. And uh, uh, they are, that's the uh, traditional dish of Salvador. Every Salvadorian eats pupusa. The name comes from uh, the Nahuatl, Nahuatl uh, language that is Indian, pupusla. This tasty treat can be stuffed with cheese, pork, or other ingredients. There is a unique style on eating a pupusa. You cannot use fork or knife. If you're a real Salvadorian, you've got to use your hands to eat the pupusa. Uh, everybody who's uh, watching this program is invited to come and eat pupusas in a Salvadorian restaurant. Hi, right, today we are here at the Comalapa restaurant of my friend Santiago Reyes. And uh, let's get in. I'm going to show you how the, the Salvadorian food is prepared. All right, guys, this is, uh, this is the kitchen. It uh, looks uh, pretty small because a lot of people work here because this is a very busy place. As we can see, they're making pupusas here. Every Salvadorian to go to any restaurant, they got to have pupusa. celebrations take many forms and this group of New Jersey teens found a unique way to share their heritage with others in their community. We're going to prepare for the parade here in Brentwood, the Salvadoran parade. Then we have another performance, uh, two more performances in New Jersey. We are over here practicing for the Salvadoran parade. What we do is we dance and we teach the new girls because we, we always, every year we have new girls, so we teach them all the dances, new steps, we change the routine. So we have pride on our country and we just play our music. From, from our country, this is the first band actually in New Jersey um, that plays this kind of music. We're not, we're not into, you know, normal band. So, you know, it's just all about pride. One thing is certain, Salvadoran Americans love their country and are proud to share their heritage with others in their new homeland. When I retire, I will go to live down in El Salvador because right? uh, I want to be able to have more time right, and have less stress. Salvadorians work very hard uh, in this country and they have worked so hard that this country 
has got bigger and has uh, been a better country because of, of our contribution. I see that is our community, the future of our community is very promising. Wait until 20, 30 years from now, All right, it'll be a different story. Okay? If I'm still alive, I'll be here to talk about a lot of things on Salvador. <laughs> All of us are together in, the, in this wonderful world in order to live in peace, in order to share love, solidarity, loyalty, and to become uh, better uh, individuals every single day.